Welcome back to the cabin. And if you're new here, uh, this is my little cabin that I built in the woods. It's inspired by a hunter trapper style cabin from the mid 1800s to late, well, early 1900s. Uh, built it all myself. I actually haven't been here in quite some time. So I do have some mice damage and squirrel damage. There is some on the right wall right beside me here. They ate between the logs. They took out all the insulation that I put there. I thought it was a good idea at the time, but uh, now looking forward like four or five years, I could have done probably a little better job and actually built the joints in the wood a little bit better. I also have finally found a decent, it's not the best, but a nice rocking chair for the inside of the cabin and I'll need to treat it a little bit. It's had quite a rough life. It was handmade a long time ago. Actually, a very long time ago. I think it's period correct to the cabin. I bought it from a, an old man who had it for sale on the side of the road. And yeah, I don't know if I paid too much for it or not, but I really like the look of it. It's maybe not for extreme use. It is quite weathered. It matches super nice with the cabin. There's some nice hand engravings on it. I really couldn't be happier. I think it's a decent size. I'll find it a spot in the cabin. It's quite cramped in there, but I'll I'll find a spot. It's exactly the style that I wanted. And like I said, it looks period correct. I'll also try and treat it. I actually brought some Danish oil and while I'm treating the chair, I'll just slightly brush it over the weathered wood. It should protect it. Danish oil is a varnish -y type oil, so it doesn't actually dry on top of the wood. It goes in the wood, but it really protects it against the weather. Not that I'm worried about it at all. For example, this chair hasn't been protected and, you know, it's where my hands are and everything is pretty much bare wood and I haven't had issues. Side note, the flies are fully active. One just bit me in the neck, but that's okay. <coughs> <coughs> I just ate one. <coughs> Back from dying from swallowing a fly. Uh, like I was saying, this chair has been protected at all and it's been doing just fine. The chair that I bought, that I'm talking about, will be inside pretty much at all times. I'm just looking forward to this fall, even more this winter. Just, you know, relaxing and rocking away in front of the fireplace. So, we'll get to, you know, staining on there. I also took a little bit darker, a dark walnut style uh, oil, just so it gives it a little bit of color. And it's going to look really nice in the cabin. And while that's all out, I would love to actually give a protecting coat onto my pack basket so while I have my little paintbrush out with the oil I'll just give a quick coat on my pack basket because it does take a beating and I don't want it to break at all so I really really try to take care of it they also are pretty expensive so let's get started Here's the chair. Uh, you guys could see it a little bit better on the outside of the cabin. It's a lot. There's a lot more light out here. But yeah, you see the wood is extremely weathered. I feel like this thing just spent most of its life outside. But yeah, and uh, see all the all the wood joints. Everything is loose. The chair is pretty riggedy raggedy, but uh, it's it's gonna do the job just fine. You know. So here's my just normal Danish oil. Some people might say that just boiled linseed oil is better, and I would tend to agree, but the prices for the same quantities just aren't the same. Boiled 
linseed oil is just a lot more expensive and uh, this was just on hand that's what I found at the hardware store so for now I'll use this like I said it's a dark walnut color so it's gonna make all the details in the chair pop so yeah let's get to it let's get the staining Chairs all done up. You can see that it's it looks just a thousand times better. It's going to be protected for another 20 years to come. Looks awesome. You could really, really see that the wood was dry because as soon as it apply oil, it would just suck it up right away. And just the the seat isn't just super shiny. It's just because I added like 10 coats because the wood would just keep sucking up all the oil and it becomes super dry same thing with the backrest it's a good five six coats i'll leave the chair outside for now just for it to dry and uh, yeah i'll leave it where it is hopefully it doesn't start raining too soon it is actually pretty cloudy but really happy with how the results came out you could really see the nice hand engravings on the backrest it's going to look awesome in the cabin can't wait to just put it next to the fire up next is my pack basket. For this one, I'm really not worried about the beauty of things. I'm not even going to take off the leather harness that I made for it. I, it's just really not that important for me. I just want a good protective coat on this. Like I mentioned before, this thing gets tossed around, it gets beat around. I put it in my mini trailer in back of the ATV on the way here. It gets beat up. I'll need to do some micro repairs. It's just standard procedure really on this thing. It's just normal maintenance. I have some wood lats that are kind of coming free. The way they are woven, sometimes if the, the wood gets dry or even by factory it's cut too short, it will kind of pop out like what happened here. It's just the end of a wooden strap really. Nothing crazy. But I need to kind of bend it and stick it back where it belongs. Like I said, it's simple, it's normal maintenance, just stuff you have to look out for if you don't want the pack to deteriorate. If you don't fix it, it will snap off and then the pack's gonna look funny and eventually, obviously, the structure is gonna be all messed up, so. Yeah, really not looking for anything super pretty. I'll try to get all the, in the nooks and crannies as much as I can, but I'm not even gonna worry about emptying it out at all and I will focus on giving a good coat on the bottom. But also, I'm sure it's gonna look awesome with the leather and the dark walnut color. It's gonna look really nice. As I was walking around the cabin looking for supplies, I actually noticed something awesome. For those of you that have been following me for a little while, maybe even a few years, you'll know that I actually made the moss, well, I made the moss roof on the cabin myself, like the rest of the cabin, but it was quite a job. I believe I have a video that's a few years old that I was just carrying moss from right at the tip of the swamp back up the mountain to my cabin in a little metal bucket. It was extremely heavy and I didn't have an ATV at that time, so I was kind of doing everything that I could by hand. The wind is nice, it's picking up. But long story short, what I finally wanted to happen happened. When you pick up moss, sometimes there's like weeds in there and there's a bunch of different, you know, obviously organisms and stuff. It's, you know, it's an alive ecosystem. It's moss is alive. So as I was throwing it on the roof, I was really hoping for, you know, for it there to be maybe even herbs or berries in there. And from my great surprise, I just walked around the cabin and there's actually a 
a wild berry bush just hanging off the roof of the cabin and it has some berries in it so pretty pretty pleased pretty happy I was gonna start work on my pack basket but I might go pick just a couple berries I'll try to beat the birds to him but since it's have, hanging over the roof I feel like the birds are gonna have a hard time getting it but from what I could see the plant is alive and healthy and hopefully it's gonna be just giving away berries and staying healthy for quite a few years to come because I love berries and it's awesome to have some so close to the cabin camera is at a funky angle but you can see I have some nice raspberries here I know some insects started getting to them but I have a bunch more that are growing so in the weeks to come I will actually have some berries a very own berry bush of my own and these things are nice and ripe you can see the camera probably won't focus on it but they are awesome looking and very tasty Pack basket came out amazing. Did even a little light coat on the inside, just the whip that I could see. But uh, yeah, Let's see, I put a lot just a super thick amount. I didn't think it through. It looks kind of dumb now, but the leather could have used a little bit of oil on it too. But I didn't bring that with me today, so it's just gonna have to do. And it's actually, you can hear it that it's super dry. So yeah, next step. Oiling up the leather, that's going to be for another day. Yeah, let that outside also, Just let it dry. I'll leave it on the front porch and go ahead and do something else. Mice damages I was talking about before. Might not seem like much, but once they start, you know, finding ways in and stuff, you really just can't stop them. Obviously, cabin, you know, it's natural material. It's not a brick, it's not cement, it's not, you know, even vinyl. They'll find ways. I can see where the hole is, it's right there. I'll try to get some caulking and just fill it up. It's gonna take 10 seconds, but still, it kind of sucks. I just have a bunch of stuff. Just a bunch of insulation. You can see how much they worked <laughs> just to get all this stuff out. But yeah, I'll just throw this in the woods never see it ever again but yeah that also smelled like mouse poop and mouse piss so i'll uh head inside get my caulking gun and fill that up real quick Quick summary of just my time at the cabin. Got a new rocking chair, 
that's been, you know, taken care of, oiled, and I guess you could say stained. Pack basket has been oiled and stained. And then, when I first arrived, I saw the mouse damage and the squirrel damage, so I just took quick care of that, cleaned it off. It didn't smell too good. Got my cock gun, filled that up, I actually emptied out the rest of the tube, so that was a perfect little job for the rest of the tube. I didn't want it to go bad this winter. So that's done. And I also got, for all my naysayers and the haters of my double bit axe, they're like, hey, you should get a splitting mall. I actually got a nice little splitting mall just for cheap. The handle is a little bit short on it. And that too, like the chair, seems like it's period correct because it had what seems like a rough life. Uh, the the handle on it, you know, it's a little bit loose. So I'd have to oil it up, but I just, like I said before, I need linseed oil and I have some at home. I just didn't think of bringing it here. But yeah, I may put that mall to use because like always around the cabin, there's stuff to do. I split wood multiple months ago. I think it was like early spring or even late winter and I was waiting for it to be hot enough outside. So I just left it on the ground. I threw it in the pile and yeah, now it's dry enough. It's just some pine. I'll leave it, I'll, I'll stack it up on the inside and yeah. If it's actually dry enough, I'll bring it into the cabin and kind of make some a little bit of kindling because, believe it or not, we are already mid-July and August and September is coming up. All the nice burr months, September, October, November, December. Those are all the best months, no bugs. It's cool outside, a little bit of snow, makes everything white, it's awesome, looks super nice. So slowly but surely, you know, gotta start thinking about that. But for now, let's put that new axe to, to use, or I should say splitting mole, because some naysayers were saying my double bit axe wasn't good enough. So I listened, and you guys were right, just because sometimes, if you hit a knot, you know, double bit axe isn't quite as heavy. Splitting mole gets the job done, no problem. So let's get to it. Here she is, splitting mole, but no splitting block. So I would also need one. At least before fall, I'd have to go scouting, and if I could get there with my ATV and pick up a nice big sized one, I will. Or if, you know, worst comes to worst, I'll make a homemade one. I'll just buy like a 8 foot 4x4 four four and make myself kind of like an old anvil block. That's what they used to do back in the day. So, yeah, I'll try to bolt everything together, make it nice and sturdy, or even, you know, better if I'm lucky, get a big maple again or something that's actually pretty hard pine sometimes just doesn't do the job but I'll use what I can get so time to pick up all this wood like I said the dry stuff is going in the cabin turns out most of the wood was wet just the under underside it's actually been raining a lot and the Sun I don't know if you guys could see but is slowly drifting away and the clouds are beginning to take over so I have a few, you know, humid pieces I'll try to split. A little bit too small for my splitting mall, so I'll head inside and get my hatchet, make some small pieces of kindling, and stack those up on the inside of the cabin. Have my little homemade, handmade leather sheath for it. This thing is awesome. It looks awesome. It's from the time period that I love. I'm not even sure when it was made, who made it. It seems like it was forged, but I've had this thing now for a good like six, eight years before the cabin. And yeah, handle on it is starting to crack just because I put a little wedge in it, but it looks awesome. The handle is nice and skinny. Really can't complain. Ooh, this stuff is pretty punky. <laughs> the axe is just burying itself, it's like a sponge. That is not the greatest wood. Go on to this one. This one, the outside is punky. Inside is decent, so I'll keep that. Go.
So, for the people that have been following me for a little while, you'll notice that I used to have solar panels and even some lights in the cabin. Oil lanterns are nice. When I'm alone, I like to just, you know, run those. Even when I'm filming sometimes, they are pretty nice. But, I also would love to have an alternative. I have a, you know, a large battery here, which is complete garbage, it's not good. It came out of a farm tractor. So, it is very heavy, very big, but not very powerful in the long run. You know, it's not a deep cycle battery or anything like that. So, that being said, I also had issues with <laughs> my wiring. So, the solar panel wasn't charging the battery at all and now it's at completely zero juice so I'm move my gas can out of the way this I'm just messing around with it and I could see the light on the battery controller it's starting to light up so I need to at least fix this because I would love to have some 12 volt batteries now on the inside I have 110 so it just sucks the battery dry but I'm going to figure out a way to take all this tape that I put on here off and there we go so quick close up to the abomination that I did uh, multiple years ago but the angle of the light you can't really see but I actually use 12 volt connectors that you would use maybe you know in an emergency uh, you know vehicle operation here you're trying to add you know some wires uh, a new stereo system or something you would use those connectors they do the job but i don't know what's wrong with it you know i actually have to solder them together and make a good connection but you guys can see here right on top of the battery i just took the tape off fiddled with them you know pushed the wires back together and the little orange light flashing right in the middle of the screen that is the solar panel telling the charge controller that he, he just doesn't have enough juice and can't charge the battery so even if i you know try to turn on my inverter by my well my actual power inverter which is right here on top of the battery it just doesn't work and battery hasn't been charged in like one or two years so yeah it's pretty much dead it's about that time that i bring in the chair i'm getting ready to head out and i need to Put all this filming equipment away before the rain finally starts coming down which is for sure gonna happen the sun is almost gone and i don't want my chair to get all wet and disgusting so pick it up stick it in the cabin and we'll see how it looks Finally in the cabin where it belongs, I'll try to, you know, fit it underneath the corner table there or even beside my bed. But for now, I'll leave it in the middle of the place just so it actually has, you know, the best chance of drying out. I don't want it leaning against anything or, you know, staining anything else. So I'll just leave it there. But you guys can see it looks pretty cool and matches awesome inside the cabin. Well, that's pretty much marks the end of another video. If you guys are new here, consider subscribing if you like the content. Feel free to check out all my older videos. I have quite a few on how I built a cabin and how much it costs. I know a lot of people have you know, the, the hesitation of all the prices and everything when they want to build their own cabin. But I do cover a few you know, videos of that topic. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. And comment if you have any questions or just, you know, anything helpful to say i always love reading comments and subscribe if you want to see more and don't forget to like the video and share to your friends it really really helps out a lot